morning and welcome to an Antarctic cruise ship. Today I want to show you this whole ship that's going around the Antarctic and what a normal day in this ship is like. Let's start by looking out the window, look at this. Every morning I'm waking up to these ridiculous views. I never thought seeing views like that would even be an option. This is what my cabin looks like. I've got a twin room, so there's two beds here. I'm guessing these are beds as well, which pull down, so technically this could hold four people. I've got my bed here, which I've been sleeping in, and then on the other bed, I've just put my clothes there. I've got all my gear there, battery charging operations there. Come over here, we've got a wardrobe, put some clothes in there, it's plenty big enough. And then we've got the bathroom. So this is the bathroom. Again, shower here. It's not the biggest, but it does the job. I'm not complaining. And we've got sink, toilet, and we get fresh towels every day. It's not massive, don't get me wrong, but it definitely serves a purpose. Average wake up time on the ship, I'd say is about 6.30. Breakfast is always open as soon as you wake up, which is always handy. Let me show it you. Hey, how are you? You good? Nice to see you. What's better as well, my walk to breakfast is literally two minutes. Breakfast is always served in the Polaris restaurant. Let me introduce you to the best waiter, James. Hi, How are you, mate? You good? good? Ah, good. We've got Reckley. Reckley, you've got the best name on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've got all the breakfast stuff here. Egg, bacon, Every, yeah, bacon, sausage, potato. We've even got poached eggs. Special, we have every single day. The special is always different. There's every been day. so much different food on this. Yes, we have so many. I have put on so much weight on this cruise. No There's just food, food, food. Food. The gym is located on deck number eight. I know, and I've never been to the gym. <laughs> Reckley, do you think I honestly use the gym? <laughs> I don't know, don't ask me that. <laughs> good to see you too, mate. Have a good one. So here you've got the proper breakfast stuff. And when you come over here, you've got the healthy stuff. So you've got like meats, cheeses, and all the different types of fruit. Cereal station here. All different types of bread there, and like all toasts and stuff there. And the best station of them all, fried eggs, omelettes, You've got everything. Once you've had breakfast, you normally go back to your room and get like thermals, waterproofs, get geared up. Once you're geared up, you go into the mud room. The mud room. This is the mud room. So in here, everybody's like jacket, boots. Let me show you my locker. Locker 56. So in mine, I've got my coat. I've got my dry suit in case I want to go kayaking. I've got my muck boots. So these are like the warmest, most waterproof thing ever. I've got my dry bag, again for kayaking to put my stuff in. My kayaking shoes, my kayaking life jacket, and then my normal life jacket just for when we go on shore basically. Once I'm kitted to the hilt from here, you head out the mudroom to the boat. Because this ship actually never docks. It never pulls up to a port, so it only stops in open water and then you've got to get a zodiac which is a small boat to the shore here you've got biosecurity and then you scan your car biosecurity is important with antarctica so you don't take any like bacteria or anything like that and this is where you come down for the boat walk down here and you get into a boat like that and then you head ashore in antarctica have fun mate see you later have a good one i'm going to show you the outer deck now right where should we start because there's so much outer deck there's the back bottom the back top the front bottom let's start at the front top i've just come out on the side of the ship this is where all the lifeboats are there's a fair few lifeboats i don't think we're going to be in any trouble if anything did happen touch wood just looking at this it says crew only but i'm sure i can get up here let me try the other side here we go, this is better. No crew only sign. I think this is where they actually drive the ship. Can I go in here? Ah, bridge is closed, condition red. Hey, how's hey, it going? Hello. Is it possible to have a look? Yeah. Thanks so much. Scary, yeah. So this is where it all happens. Wow. Have you met Eggie before? No, I've not. Nice to meet you. Where are you from? Ukraine. Ah, Ukraine, nice. Which part? Abyssa. Ah, yeah, the nice. South. Where are you from? Uh, UK, from UK. Wales. Yeah. Wow, so these are all the, the fire panels. It's very curious, smoke detectors. So how long have you drove this ship for? Since 2019. 2019? Yeah, on, on this exact yeah, ship? Yeah, on this exact yeah. ship. Have you ever had any problems at all with ice or icebergs or anything like that? Yeah, just yesterday. <laughs> yesterday? Oh, really? <laughs> too much ice was there yesterday. Too much ice, yeah. Difficult to maneuver, you know. The ice was drifting too fast. Okay, you're looking on the starboard now. 
nothing there. You start the engine, you start most other iceberg passing by and you cannot go this side. Really? So yeah. ice just comes in really quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. It just looks like really sort of basic in here, doesn't it? I, I, I don't know why I expected. Is, the you buttons are... Stuff on that ah, side, fair. Like the Let's go there. Are you sure? You don't yeah. mind? Your way yeah. <laughs> oh wow, look at this. Yeah. So this is the panel, just like wipers, you yeah. know, all lights. So is this the main steering wheel? Main steering wheel. Oh wow, right in the centre of the ship. And are you oh, constantly oh. monitoring this? Me? No, I have all yeah, the information yeah. up there. So here it's mostly for uh, quartermaster, so he can see how the course is changing, what's the rudder going on, you know. You know. Ah, okay. Yeah. So that's a rudder angle, and that's the course. Yeah, this is the rudder So I'm that's constantly to. changing this then? Now it's changing because wind is pushing us, we are turning. This is all the high tech stuff. The ship is quite old, but what we have here, equipment, is quite stable. So, so this is all the navigation stuff? Yeah, radars and charts. Wow. Charts, same like you have in your car. How's the weather looking for the Drake Passage? It will be a little bit rough, it's manageable. Yeah, Not, yeah. Nothing like very serious. Amazing, well, so nice to yeah, meet you. So nice yeah, to meet you too. Well. Have a good one, and fingers yeah. crossed we get home okay. <laughs> What a lovely guy. It's so interesting to see the bridge of a ship. I've never actually been into a bridge of a ship before. They must have so many things to think about in there, especially with these weather conditions. Now I'm on the top, top front of the boat. As you can see, there's the front of the boat there. And look at these views. It's ridiculous, look at it. This camera cannot do this any justice at all. It is so cold out here, I can't even tell you. But it's amazing that I can even connect to the internet out here. To think I'm in the middle of nowhere in the seventh continent in Antarctica and I can still get onto YouTube, do email, sort my skin stuff out. I just want to thank Shopify for sponsoring this video. When I started selling my skin stuff back in 2018, I set up my own website to sell it, which was a nightmare. So I switched over to Shopify, which made it so much easier and that's powered the website ever since. So that'll be, what, three, four years now. The reason I actually called it Skint was because when I was thinking of a name, I was Skint. Shopify make it really easy for anyone to set up a business and launch a website anywhere in the world. As you can see, I can edit the products on the back end and when I have new items, I can just add them in whenever I like. I can also see all the data on the back end, such as which countries all the orders have come from. To date, I've received orders from 37 different countries, which is ridiculous to think this skint stuff around the world. I cannot tell you how grateful I am for everyone who supported me and my business thank you i'm glad to say after some hard work all the skint stuff is now back up online and available if you have any ideas that you're passionate about shopify is a very affordable and efficient way to give your business a go whether it's a clothing line a product or any other idea you don't know what you don't know and sometimes if you're really passionate about an idea and you give it a go you might surprise yourself like me here in antarctica start your free trial by going to shopify.com co.uk slash Simon Wilson to check it out and good luck. Right, let me show you the back of the boat where the pool and the jacuzzi is. Wow, it's getting cold up here. So this is the jacuzzi. Maximum four guests. And that's it there. It looks really green, but it's actually seawater that they've heated up. So apparently it turns green. I wonder if it's actually hot. Fair play, that's actually pretty hot. You'd think in these conditions, there'd be no way to keep that hot. The pool's downstairs, which I'll show you now, but this is the back of the boat. As you can see, they've tied up all the furniture just in case the weather changes and the sea gets bad. I've heard the weather in Antarctica changes like that. So you've got to be prepared for it. Look at these views though. It it just never gets boring. All the floating ice and the mountains at the back. Look at that mountain over there. It's incredible. I just never thought it was an option to even go to Antarctica. Let me show you the pool down here. And here we have the pool. I'm not quite sure what that is, but this is the pool and I reckon it's gonna go everywhere soon. If that sea turns and gets rough, it'll be interesting to see what happens with that pool. Yeah, are you draining? Yeah, draining yeah. Ah, you're taking the pool out. The pool is going. Draining. Look at it swaying already. Tonight we're going to drink passage. So the sea's gonna be, yeah, you, you can see it already. I think it's a good idea to drain the pool. They're does it get it. crazy, does it? They're doing it slowly. Ah. It just doesn't drain like a uh, sink. So all 
the water in the pool seawater, right? Yes. Exactly. So when the pool is full and the sea gets bad, what does the pool drain, look like? It drain. It'll really? Drain. Yeah, Why? Because yeah. it just goes... No, it just goes everywhere. Have you ever had people in it when the sea's bad? No, we don't even let people in it. Yeah, yeah it's that just, bad. If the ship starts moving, yeah. then we ask people immediately to get off the pool. Yeah. No it just goes to show how quickly the weather changes here because that pool hasn't been full long and already they're draining it. This ship was built in Poland in 1982 and I believe it holds 400 passengers but with the Antarctic regulations the maximum you can have aboard is 200 to actually make landings into Antarctica so I think the most people that are on this boat now is 200. I might be wrong but that's what I've been told. There's nine decks on this ship in total and there's all kinds of different rooms but the rooms on this side have got a window to look out to sea and the rooms on this side are like interior rooms with no view. So far so good, it's a really cool ship. It doesn't feel that old to be fair and does its job. Good news, lunch is open and I need to introduce you to someone. How are we gentlemen? Oh, We've yeah. got Declan from... Rochford Bridge in Ireland. Albert. Phoenix, Arizona. And Chris. Washington, D.C. Everyone on this table has come on their own. Chris has come on his own, Albert's come on his own, and Declan's come on his own. Declan, why Antarctica? It's just been on my bucket list since I was young. Man. Has it? For as long as I can remember, it's been on that list. Just always wanted to go, man. Fair yeah. play. Albert, why Antarctica? Well, I've been up north to see the Arctic, dog sledding, northern lights. Now, come down here to see the land of fire and ice. Makes me bipolar, I've seen both poles. <laughs> Interesting fact about Albert. Albert is 82 years old. Mate, coming to Antarctica 82 years old is absolutely amazing. And Albert taught me a very famous quote. Go on, Albert. Not that again, please. <laughs> all right, all right, just for you, my friend. There may be snow on the roof, but there's still fire in the furnace. <laughs> I, love, I love life, I love life. This man is so inspiring. He even ran a marathon. No, it wasn't a marathon. A triathlon. A triathlon. A triathlon at 81 years old. What was the triathlon like, mate? It was hard, but it was inspiring. It was something to do to just prove I can still do it and live. Do you think you'll do another triathlon, or is that it now? Or? I will do short course ones just to keep in training, just stay alive and make yeah. sure all, all, all the parts work. <laughs> Yeah. How much training do you do daily? Do you train daily? Intensive training, you'd be about a mile and a half of swimming three days a week and then I would do a hundred miles of biking and then about 20 miles of running. And up to that what age did you do that? I started in the late 50s, went through the 60s and 70s. Flipping yeah. heck, every credit. Chris, why Antarctica for you? I always wanted to see the seven continents, so this is the seventh for me. So you've ticked it off? Yeah, I have ticked it off. So, And then the more I researched about it, going to it before I went, the more I was really into it. Do you know what though, that is the amazing thing about travelling alone, that you meet people like this, even though I wish I hadn't met any of <laughs> <laughs> Mate, it's been a pleasure, absolute pleasure. You too. Thank Albert. You too. It's been genuinely good meeting you too, man. I just thought he was some scouser with a camera, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Albert, have you got any words of wisdom? For you? Yeah. Get that camera out of my face. <laughs> Reckley, thanks so much. You're most yeah. welcome. See you later. Have a good one, mate. See you, man. See you later. You. Albert, yeah. well, there's you snow on the roof. Seven. There's oh, still yes, fire yes. in the furnace. I w you wish you had that fire. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, boys. In here, we have the ship shop. They sell all types of stuff. We've got coats, more coats, Antarctic expedition, fleeces, waterproofs, hats, sunglasses. We've got a patch of the ship, Ocean Endeavour. I've never actually seen this bit. Oh my God, they sell chocolate brownies. Over here we've got gloves, underlayers, more underlayers, Antarctic flags, and postcards. The interesting thing about these postcards is that if you write this postcard, they will actually send it from the post office in Antarctica. It's actually the picture of the post office on the front. And I'm not too sure how long it takes to get home. How long does it take? Do not expect to see it before Christmas. If you get it before Easter, it's probably doing well. Really? So how long on average does it take for a postcard to get home from Antarctica? 
Antarctica? To the UK? To the UK? Oh, to the UK probably is not so bad. Probably two months. Two months? Yeah. And what about like US then? Is that a lot longer or? Yeah, yeah, because it'll go to Do you want your own copy? And yeah. You have to go on to the nope. US. Ah, so Thank they you. all go to the UK first. They go and to then the Falklands they... first. And then the, from the Falklands, it goes yeah. by air to UK. Ah, so if you're okay. in the UK, you get it sooner. But then from there, if you're in like Israel or Australia or Alaska yeah. or whatever. It's well, thanks so much. Though. I can't wait to receive it in Easter. Thank you so much. Right. See you later. Have a good one. In here is the Nautilus Lounge. This is where everybody like chills out at night. This is the famous bar. Oliver over here has got everything. How are you, Oliver? You uh, good? Yes, good. Sir. Are you serving drinks yet? Or? Yes, of course. Beers at this time in the morning? Beers, cocktails. Cocktail. Is there anything you don't serve here? We don't serve food. Not food, only drink. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers mate, see you later. So this is the main entertainment lounge of a night. As you can see, it's pretty big. Piano at the back, loads of seats here, and you've even got a dance floor here. You definitely won't catch me on the dance floor. Coming out of the main lounge in there, you've got another lounge through here where they serve teas and coffees 24 hours a day. Also in here as well, they've got like a mini library with all Antarctic books. What have we got? Antarctic Destinies, the South Pole, Antarctica, Antarctic Atlas, and loads more just Antarctica books there. Coming on the wall, you've got a map of the whole of the Antarctic continent there. Here you've got all types of wildlife that you could potentially see in Antarctica, like the orca, imagine seeing an orca, a sperm whale, a fin whale, a humpback whale, you've got all the different types here, all the different sizes, seals, leopard seal. It would be so amazing to see some of those things, I can't wait. Ah, over here as well, you've got like the history wall. This is about all the people that have been to Antarctica. You've got Roald Amundsen, the first guy ever to get to the South Pole. What have we got over here? Is this afternoon tea? Oh my God, we've got lion bars, sandwiches, cookies. What else have we got? M&M's. M&M's, marshmallows, cake. This is the best afternoon tea ever. Oh yeah, look at this. Sauna, that could be important, depending on how cold I get on this trip. How does this work? We've got sauna one, and we've got sauna two. This one says sauna's free, let's try this one. This looks pretty decent. You've got a toilet there. You've got like a changing room here. Outside deck, little standing area outside here. And then you've got shower and sauna. Oh wow, shower area here. Then you've got the sauna. Fair play, it is cooking in here. What is it, 80 degrees, wow. I know exactly where I'm coming after I've been in that snow. Let's try the other sauna, see what that's like. Sauna one, let's try this. This is bigger again, you've got another outside deck there, changing rooms there, you've got a washroom there, and then shower and sauna. You've got a few more showers in here, so I think this one's bigger. Oh wow, this one is big. This must be the main sauna, look at this though. You can literally sit in the sauna and just look out to sea like that. I tell you what, I could get used to this. I reckon I'm gonna be spending a fair bit of time in here. I've actually got a massage booked in the spa on the ship. I've not been to the spa here, but it is in the Meridian Club, which is just up here. I can't tell you how much I need this. Here we go, the spa. Ah, there's no one actually in here, yeah? But what's in here? Uh, if you want your nails done, you can get them done there. I'm guessing these are the treatment rooms. You've got a gym as well. It's not a bad gym. Three exercise bikes there that I definitely won't be using. Some weightlifting stuff here, another exercise bike, and some more cardio stuff in the back. That's actually pretty decent. Let's go and get this massage. What massage have I in for? You are doing the pick and mix. The so pick and mix. 20 minutes on your yep. back, 20 minutes scalp massage, and 20 minutes on your feet. Amazing, thank you so much. Yeah. Where are you from, Coletto? South Africa. South Africa, which part? Yes. Sure, yeah. I was in Johannesburg one week ago. Did you enjoy it? I did. Amazing place. And there was a man who would like walk around with lions in the field. Is this normal in South Africa? I mean, I ride an elephant to school. So. You ride an elephant to school? Oh my god. How cool is that? that is, did you actually? <laughs> what do you take to school? A bus? No, a cat. <laughs> I cannot wait for this massage. Oh wow, check this out. This is the bed, and this is the view of the lifeboat. Can you actually see the sea out of here? Yeah, you can. The sea's actually really rough at the minute, so this is gonna be interesting. 
I need one of these beds at home. I could literally lie here all night. Coletto, what is my back like? Is it in good condition or bad? Hell no. Hell no? Oh no. It's very bad. This is what you get for sleeping on a flight for a week. On that note, I'm gonna let Coletto sort my back out. Tomorrow we're actually going into Antarctica, so that's gonna be really interesting. Have a good one, and I'll see you soon.